For the main topic today, I got to go back to when Amanda and I were planning our wedding. We were going through the wedding reception and trying to figure out what traditions we wanted to keep in the wedding reception and which ones we didn't want to keep. For example, I didn't do a garter toss. She didn't do a bouquet toss because the origins of those traditions were not ones that we wanted to per se perpetuate as a result, even though they they've deviated from the initial purposes. One tradition we went back and forth about was the dollar dance, collecting money for a dollar for a guest to dance with either me or her for a few seconds of a song, and then another guest comes in. The best man and the maid of honor would be standing there basically with like vases or, or coffee jars for people to drop their dollar in. They come up, they dance, they say hi, you get some exclusive time with your friends and family who are there to see you and celebrate your big day. But we didn't feel like we needed the money from a dollar dance. We decided that it was something that would be fun to do. We might want to integrate that into the reception, but we didn't need the money. So how about we dedicate our dollar dance to charity? We were, as a result of getting married, Amanda lived in Kansas, I lived in Utah. She was going to move out to Utah with me, and we were going to use the honeymoon as sort of a transition moving the last of her stuff in her out from Kansas to Utah. We had everything already packed up and ready to go. We figured we'd be driving through Denver, and there was a charity that Amanda knew about. It's called Christ in the City. They focus on serving the homeless. And that's something that has definitely been a topic for Amanda and I to talk about quite a bit. It's heartbreaking to see homeless people who are struggling, who are cold in the winter, who are on the side of the road begging for food, begging for money. And while our heart might ache for them, we don't know the best way to help them always. We we don't know if we give them some assistance, we give them some money. We don't know if they're going to spend that on in a way that would be productive for them or spend it on a vice that is perpetuating a self-destructive behavior in, in their homelessness and the situation they're in. But this charity, Christ in the City, they specialized in having people go out and build relationships with, with the homeless so that they can feel like they're not invisible as people walk past them every day, that someone wants to be their friend, genuinely. And those friends, the volunteers who work for Christ in the City, get to reach out to those people in a very human place and help them find the tools, find the resources, find the path to walk out of the homelessness. Well, we thought that was very cool, and we figured if we collected some cash from the dollar dance, dedicated our dollar dance to Christ in the city, we could stop by on like, what would it be, the first or second day of our honeymoon, and deliver our donation to them in person. We thought that would be really cool. And we took that one step further. We also decided that we would donate some of our time that day to actually help the missionaries, to help the volunteers who who were there for Christ in the city that day, go out and talk to the homeless people. And they don't call them the homeless people. They say our friends on the street. So we were going to go out and talk to the, the missionaries' friends on the street, if you will. And we had an outstanding conversation with one gentleman. I remember Amanda and I walked up to him. He was wearing a an orange Broncos baseball cap. We're in Denver, so I complimented him on the hat, and he was kind of standoffish. I'm not going to use his name for his privacy, but he he had his arms crossed. He really didn't want to talk. We asked him a couple questions, and he started sharing his story. He had an amazing story. He used to be a wildly successful businessman before he wound up on the streets due to horrible and uh, unpredictable circumstances. And at first, he he wasn't letting on that he had a lot of hope. He was having a bad day. He was having a bad day. By the end of our conversation, he started sharing his plan on how he was going to break break his problem of homelessness, how he was looking to get some housing, how people through Christ in the city were genuinely helping him to get out of the horrible place where he was. And he didn't he didn't like being homeless. He didn't choose to be homeless. And he was choosing to get out. And because we talked to him, because we had a conversation, he said that his day went from being a bad day to being a very good day. He walked away with a smile. He was looking up when he went on to get in line for food. There there was a 
part of the thing the group was doing that day was was handing out food. And I can't tell you how much that experience stuck with Amanda and I. It was a, a wonderful way for us to give some treasure that we collected at our wedding reception, as well as our time and our talents for listening and building relationships with this one gentleman who had fallen on the hardest of times. And one thing that's amazing is Christ in the City Now is not only located in Denver, but I think they're located in Philadelphia as well. What I have here, if you can see the video, is the Christ in the City website. And you can see that they've got a Mother Teresa quote. Many people talk about the homeless, but few people talk to them. I think their approach, having seen it firsthand, is a beautiful way to reach people in need. I think it's it's outstanding. And we have some stats here. They have 47 active missionaries. And they have 38,236 plus hours of ministering to the homeless on the streets. They've helped over 2,500 unique homeless individual encounters. And they have 750 plus trained volunteers. As a part of our donated time, Amanda and I went through the training to be trained volunteers. And we learned in that training why it's really important to know the best way to help our friends on the street, to help them in a way that's going to be productive, and to help them in a way that's going to result in genuine change, tangible change and human change. In the description of today's show, I'm not only going to link the Dave Ramsey call that we covered in the story uh, at the start of the episode, but also the Christ in the City website. And if you're looking to give some charitable dollars here at the end of the year and looking for the tax benefit, they take donations on their website. They've got a little little support CIC with a heart button in the corner of their website. And I think their charity definitely worth giving to. I'm going to try to make it a habit. I'm going to try to make it a recurring thing at least once a year on the Hopefield Financial Podcast to highlight a charity that I think is out there doing some really good work so that we can diversify our intentionality when it comes to charitable giving. And even if we don't give to the charity, we can share their story, their mission. We can share what it is that they stand for with others who might be able to give and support them with time, talent, or treasure. Now, one more thing before we go. Two weeks ago on the show, I talked about how to get out of debt in December. As a part of that, I mentioned that when we're giving, we give time, talent, and treasure. And I had an example of how you could make a homemade gift in order to reduce cost. It was uh, the little wooden card boxes I'm making for Amanda's grandparents. The week after, I didn't have an update. I said that if they were done, well, I was going to share them with you. After I finish recording here, I'm going to change into something that's a little bit more stain friendly and I'm going to finish staining the boxes. But since we're going to be editing this for a couple days after, this is what the finished product looks like. I'm really excited to give these boxes to Amanda's grandparents as not only something that we were able to put time and talent into, but not a lot of money. And I'm hoping that they are taken as gifts that are a lot more meaningful and a lot more treasured than anything that we could have simply picked up in a department store. And I just wanted to, to you know, as we wrap up this year for the Hopefield Financial Podcast, close that little teaser that I gave, kind of carrying through the theme of gift giving with time and talent and treasure this December. With that, I'm not going to see you for the rest of the year. Next year starts a whole new season of the Hopefield Financial Podcast. What 2024 is going to bring has me incredibly excited. If you listened all the way to the end, please like, share, follow, subscribe, budget bravely, happy new year, and enjoy your Hopefield financial future.